Hey everybody, welcome to Cryptopia. So today's video is going to be brought to you by Michael, one of our partners here at Cryptopia, and he's going to be bringing you fast and informative tutorial and how-to videos on everything crypto. I hope you enjoy this video and make sure you stick around to the end and hit that like and subscribe button. Over to you, Michael. Hey, Cryptopians. Welcome to another tutorial video. John, thanks for the intro. All right, everyone. Today, we're going to be doing a tutorial video on installing MetaMask to Google Chrome as an extension to be able to use it to do your crypto trades. Okay, so what we're going to do is open another tab on the Explorer. And we're going to come down here and we're going to search MetaMask. What it's going to pull up is on the top search result is going to be MetaMask.io. You're going to want to make sure to go to metamask.io. Uh, don't go anywhere else. There are other illegitimate sites that are not MetaMask posing as MetaMask, and you can sign up there and lose a lot of money. So don't do that. Just go ahead and go over to metamask.io. Okay, now that we have MetaMask's homepage pulled up here, we're going to go over to the Download tab and click it. And once we're here on the Download tab, what we're going to do is go ahead and install MetaMask for Chrome. As you can see here, it's pulled up the option to add it to Chrome. So we're going to click Add to Chrome. Go ahead and approve Add Extension. Okay, so now it's going to bring us to this page where we have a couple of options. We can either import a MetaMask account using a secret fit recovery phrase, or we can set up a new wallet. Uh, we're going to set up a new wallet today, but there's also that option to import a wallet. If you already have one on your uh, mobile device, you just go ahead and enter your secret. Click this option here and enter your secret recovery phrase, and it will import it for you. But let's go ahead and proceed with creating a wallet. Now we come to the create password page. We're going to go ahead and create a password for this demonstration. Now that we've entered both passwords and they match up, we're going to go ahead and agree to the terms of service and click create. Not only do you not share your secret recovery phrase, do not copy it or paste it on your desktop or mobile device. You always want to write it down by hand and keep it in a safe, secure place. And we're going to click next. Now that we've come to this page, what it's going to do is it's going to display our secret recovery phrase for us to write down. Okay, now that we've written down by hand our secret recovery phrase, we're going to go ahead and click next. And on this page here, we're going to confirm our secret recovery phrase and enter it in the order that it was written down in. And it's going to take us to this congratulations page where we have officially created a MetaMask wallet using our desktop extension we installed on our desktop. It's just going to give you some bullet point notes here about saving your backup in multiple places, you know, writing it down, making a copy or two, and keeping it in a safe place or two, so that way you have it as backup. Also, be careful of phishing attacks. Make sure not to click on any known links. Also, that you can find your secret recovery phrase in settings, which we'll go over in a minute. And I'm going to go ahead and click All Done. And now, as you can see here, we have the MetaMask itself opened as an extension on the Chrome browser, and we're in our MetaMask account. I'm going to go over some of the tabs and options so that way you can be familiar with it. At the very top you have your different networks that you're actually going to be operating on. Right now it has only Ethereum mainnet but if you want to you can add a network. We'll go ahead and click that. When we come over here to this page you're going to see that MetaMask already has certain networks already added their information. So today we're just for an example we're going to go ahead and add the Binance Smart Chain. We're going to click Add. It'll ask you to approve, and then it'll ask if you want to switch to it. Now we've successfully added and switched to the Binance Smart Chain. We can go back to Ethereum by going up here and clicking again and selecting Ethereum. What this does is it allows us to switch between different networks and also add the networks. As you can see, all the ones that are already preloaded, you can go ahead and use those. But if you need to add a network manually, you're going to go ahead and click Add a Network Manually, and then go in here and enter the network name, the new RPC URL, the chain ID, the currency symbol, the block explorer URL. So that goes over the uh, different networks that you main nets that you can operate your wallet on and switch between from and add them, add the different blockchains to your wallet. If you look to the right of that, there's going to be a button that you can click. This is going to pull up your accounts. Obviously, we're using account one. You can create an additional account. You can import an account. That's the same option that we saw earlier when we were setting it up. Now you can just do it through here. Now that you've created a, an account, you can just click the import account. And what you'll do is enter the, the private key string to be able to import the account itself. You can also do it with a JSON file as well. Then you can also connect a hardware wallet like a Ledger or a Trezor. And then there's the support button. And then there's the settings, which we can get into now. As you can see here, there are different tabs in the settings for different categories of settings. We're going to start with the general. At the very top is currency conversion, where it's going to ask how you would like your currency displayed, whether that be in the US dollar or any other type of currency. But we're just going to go ahead and leave that at US dollar. Next, as you move down, it's going to be primary currency. It's going to allow you to either display as 
your primary display, whether that's going to be a value in, in the currency itself, the amount, or it's actually going to be displayed in a fiat, so your actual dollar amount. Just something to keep in mind there. Um, as we move down, it allows you to pick the different languages, and if you don't speak English, there are a whole bunch of other ones that you can use to be able to operate your MetaMask in. Moving down further, you've got the theme itself, which um, you can do either in a light, dark, or system. I prefer light. And moving down, we have the account Identicon. Uh, these are just a couple different options for you to be able to display your different accounts, meaning your different MetaMask accounts, not currencies, um, with pictures and you'll be able to identify those easier and then at the very bottom it gives us the option to hide tokens without balance meaning that if you have a token that you have added to your wallet and at one point in time held that currency and then sold it all off it will uh, hide that from you so you don't have to scroll through endless currencies that you're no longer holding in your wallet now we're going to move down to advanced. In the advanced section, we have state logs. State logs contain your public account addresses and sent transactions. If you want to go ahead and download that, you can. Sync with mobile is the next option if you want to sync your account with your mobile device. The next option is reset your account. Resetting your account will clear your transaction history. This will not change the balances in your account or require you to re-enter your sec secret recovery phrase. After that, we have the advanced gas controls. Select this to show gas price and limit controls directly on the send and confirm screens. It's just another option you can put on there to see more detailed information about your gas on your transactions. Enhanced token detection. CoinSys token API aggregates a list of tokens from various third-party tokens lists. When turned on, the token will automatically be detected and searchable on the Ethereum mainnet, Binance, Polygon, and Avalanche. When turned off, automatic detection and search can only be done on the Ethereum mainnet. So what this does is if you're going to be doing some sub-assets on one of these main blockchains, i.e. Ethereum, Binance, Polygon, Avalanche, and you want to add those sub-assets, you can turn this on and easily add those assets, but I'm going to go through in a minute here and show you how to add those things without relying on that. I prefer to go to CoinMarketCap or CoinGecko and add the contract myself, so that way I know I'm adding the correct contract and I can trust the work that I do. But if you're new or unfamiliar with this, this is an option to you. Show hex data, select this to show the hex data field on the screen. That's if you want to add that information. Show conversion on test networks, select this for fiat conversion on test networks. You're probably not going to be using test networks, so this is not an option that you would want to use unless you're using test networks. Also show test networks. This is also put off because a lot of people don't really use test networks and it's something that I wouldn't worry about. Custom transaction nonce. Turn this on to change the nonce transaction number on confirmation screens. This is an advanced feature used cautiously. Auto lock timer. Set the idle time before MetaMask will become locked. So this is just like with your laptop or computer. Once you have it set to lock out after a certain period of time, it's going to lock out the MetaMask for you and you have to enter your password to get back in. As you can see here, it's also displayed in minutes. This is something that I would recommend putting on there. Um, depending on how often you're on your phone, anywhere from two to five minutes would be my recommendation. Back up your data. You can back up your user settings containing preferences and account addresses into a JSON file. Um, this is just so that way if you want to save your settings and stuff like that, you can download it and export it into a file. Restore user data. You can restore user settings containing preferences and account addresses from a previously backed up on JSON file. So if you want to use the backup on, that's listed above here and download it and say you have to, you get a new computer or a new device and you want to add your MetaMask to that device, once you do, you can restore all your accounts and user settings through adding, uh, uploading the JSON file on this option here. IPFS gateway, enter the URL of the IPFS CID gateway to use for ENS content resolution. This is one of the more advanced options. I don't recommend using it. If you want to go ahead and look further into that to be able to how to use it. Preferred connection type, customize how you want to connect your ledger to MetaMask. Web HID is recommended, but other options are available. You can read more by clicking the link they have over here. Basically, this is going to allow you to customize how your connection between your ledger and MetaMask work. Um, I would recommend going with the recommended settings, but if you want to go more into it, you can click the learn more link they have there and also refer to the information you can get from Ledger. 
And at the very bottom here, we have dismiss secret recovery phrase backup reminder. Turn this on to dismiss the secret recovery phrase backup reminder message. We highly recommend that you backup your secret recovery phrase to avoid loss of funds. This is an option for being reminded of backing up your secret recovery phrase. It's something you don't necessarily have to turn on if you have backed up your secret recovery phrase and have it somewhere safe. Okay, going back up to the other tabs, we're going to go under contact. So under contacts, you can add contacts. Um, you want to go ahead and under the username here, either enter someone's username or add whatever type of company, project, or whoever you want to put in your contacts list. Put their name there and then go ahead and paste their account address. Click save and it's going to go ahead and save that to your contacts list so you can pull it up easier instead of having to copy and paste it, from, copy it from somewhere else and paste it back into your wallet when you're going to send funds. It's a good way of keeping track of things, but just make sure when you do save a contact that you have the correct address in there so that way when you go to use it later, you know it's correct and you can send funds. On the next tab, we're going to have security and privacy. Under security and privacy, it's going to give you the option to reveal your secret recovery phrase. If you do click this, it's going to ask you for your password. So we'll, for this example, we'll just go ahead and do that real quick. Now that I've entered the password, it's going to display the secret recovery phrase. It gives you the option to copy to clipboard or save as a CSV file. I highly recommend, again, do not do this. Just go ahead and write it down, and you can enter your secret recovery phrase later. Now that we've done the steps to know how to reveal our secret recovery phrase to write down and save later, we're going to look at the next options here, which is show incoming transactions. This is defaulted to on. I would go ahead and leave that on because it'll allow you to show incoming transactions. The next one is the phishing detection. I display a warning for phishing domains targeting Ethereum users. This is definitely something I recommend keeping on. The last option here is participate in Metametrics. Again, I don't recommend turning it on, but you can if you want. Okay, moving down to the next one is going to be alerts. So under the alerts here, we have a browsing a website with an unconnected account selected. So under alerts, the first option is browsing a website with an unconnected account selected, meaning that this alert is shown in the pop-up when you are browsing a connected Web3 site, but the currently selected account account is not connected. So it lets you know that your the wallet you have currently selected is not connected to the website. The second option is when a website tries to use the removed window.web3 API. What that means is this alert is shown when the pop-up you are browsing a site that tries to use the remove window.web3 API and may be broken as a result. Moving on to networks. Now here's the network page where I had talked previously about some of this where we can switch through the different networks by clicking this here. We can go into the settings to find all of this stuff or we can just click add network which is going to bring us to this page. But if we go back over to networks, what it's going to do is show you what networks you actually have on your wallet. And then below that, test networks, which you're not going to be utilizing, so I wouldn't worry about that. But you can also click the add a network button here, which is the same as the add network button here. So we click add network, it brings us over to this page. Under the experimental tab, they have an enhanced gas fee UI. They've updated it to allow for gas estimation and customization works. You can turn it on if you want to try it out. It just it gives you a little bit more information and then tries to uh, reduce the amount of gas fees that you have. It's, it's a pretty cool option. You can turn it on and try it out if you want. If it works, if you like it and works for you, go ahead and use it. At the very bottom, we have the About tab. It's just going to bring you over the version of MetaMask that you're using and provide the different links. Back to the wallet page itself, there are three periods in a row here. As an option, you can click on this. It will show, gives you the option to view account on Etherscan. What that'll do is pull up this MetaMask account on Etherscan Explorer, and you can look at a lot more detailed information on there. Uh, we'll be having another tutorial video on how to use Etherscan and all of the other scans for the, for the big blockchains, but that's what that option is for. Moving down, you can go to account details. If you click on it, it's going to show the name of the account, which you can edit by clicking here. As you can see, it's that easy to change the name of the account. Below that, we have an RF code that you can use to scan with another device to pull up the actual account. And below that, this has export private key. Just like showing the secret recovery phrase, it's going to ask you to enter your password, and then it's going to display a private key that you can use to import and share your account if you need to, but I don't recommend doing that. Then on our third option here, it has connected sites. 
as you can see it's bringing it up that there are no currently no connected sites when you are connected to sites uh, it will show a list of those and it'll give you an option to, to disconnect from those I highly recommend if you are going to be using dApps or your web3 browser and you're connecting to sites once you're done go ahead and go to this section here and disconnect from those sites because you don't want to leave your connections open as it may leave you vulnerable now that we've gotten through all the settings and the top buttons you come down here and you can see that we have ethereum displayed and the amount of ethereum that's currently in the wallet which for since this is an example is zero however if we want to switch between different blockchains and see different assets we can click up here and go over to the binance smart chain and see that we have bnb um, and how much bnb we have obviously none in this example below the actual asset itself it's going to show you three different options you can either buy send or swap cryptos if you click buy it's going to give you a list of options of how to bring crypto into your wallet you can either use coinbase pay transact moonpay wire or directly deposit eth in itself um, there as you can see there's different options under the send button if you want to if you already have assets in your wallet and you want to send crypto to someone else you're going to click the send button and then you're going to want to enter their address to be able to send those funds to that account if you click swap button it's going to bring it up to where you can swap different ethereum tokens for other tokens as you can see here all these tokens that are on the list are uh, other sub assets of ethereum on the ethereum blockchain now if you want to swap bnb assets or any other network assets you switch to that network then click the swap button and then as you can see you'll have bnb and then a list of bnb sub assets okay now that we've covered the buy send swap buttons you come down here you've got a couple different categories you've got assets which we are currently selected on or you can move over to activity which is going to show your transaction history now that we've gone over the asset and activity tab there's the portfolio site uh, link if you click on that it'll allow you to connect your metamask and view your entire portfolio uh, contained within the wallet below that we're actually have a list here um, right now there's only one but the assets of itself that are in the wallet on this blockchain are going to be listed here and you can click on each asset to display it so for example if we were to click on ethereum it will bring us over to the actual asset display of the ethereum and how much we have with the transactions below this is slightly different than being back on the main page here where it lists ethereum <clears throat> but if you have other tokens it's going to list them here you come down here it's going to say don't see your token it's going to give you a link for a refresh list or import tokens if you do the refresh list it's just going to refresh your your metadata to be able to see if there's anything that's been added and then it will display that however there's the import tokens link and we're going to go ahead and go there and show you some more about importing sub assets on ethereum or any other network when we come to the import tokens page this is where it allows us to add other sub assets or smaller coins not specifically l1 blockchains there are a couple tabs on this whether you want to search them or manually add them i highly recommend manually adding them and that is under this custom token tab here under the custom token tab it gives you some options you need to add, add the token address the token symbol and the token decimal however when you go to coin gecko or coin market cap and find the contract for the token you would like to add you go ahead and paste it in here and then move your cursor down it will m automatically enter the token symbol and decimal for you if you've entered your contract address right 99 percent of the time if not you need to go to etherscan or whatever type of network it is scan and pull up the specific additional parameters for token symbol and token decimal for it to display correctly but for the most part all you really need to do is go to coin gecko or coin market cap find the contract paste it in here and once you've paste it in here click on the next tab down and it will load and automatically enter those for you and then you can click add custom token and at the very bottom here there is a metamask support link this concludes the basic tutorial of metamask if you guys have any questions or comment go ahead and put them down below the video um, please be sure to like and subscribe if you like the content that we're putting out join us on telegram where we have ico sales regularly we also have a discord where you can access those ico sales we also have a patreon where we do buy sell and stake alerts so please come check us out and we'll see you in the next video.